Welcome to The Fire Within. I'm Joel Young. This week, I'm quite excited about the discussion and the topic that we're going to undertake uh, in line with, guess what, of all things, the healthcare field. With me today is a gentleman who is in the healthcare field and in the field of chiropractic medicine. I'd like to welcome Dr. Ryan Harris, the founder and operator of Glenmore Chiropractic. Thank you for coming. You're welcome, Joel. It's good to be here. Thanks for inviting it's, me. Uh, it's quite interesting. I, uh, I want my viewers to know that I became acquainted with, with Ryan, Dr. Harris, as a patient. I'm still a patient of his. I've got a problem with my left shoulder, and as I'm getting older, the problem exacerbates itself. And my family doctor had told me about one of the modalities that Dr. Harris undertakes, which he's going to talk to us about today. And uh, as a result of that, I started going to see him, and I found out that it doesn't hurt to see a, a chiropractor. And on that note, maybe you could tell our viewers what is Glenmore Chiropractic, and then talk to, talk to us about your technology. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Glenmore Chiropractic is a, a myriad of things, really. It's, as a chiropractor, I mainly work with musculoskeletal injuries. Um, I mean, I think most people think of chiropractors as, as bone crunchers, right? That's mainly what we deal with. I'm a little different. I deal a lot with uh, soft tissue as well and have for about 10 years now. Okay. So, yeah, the mainstay of what a chiropractor does is really adjust the, the joints in the body in order to free up blockages in the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system and, and obviously alleviate pain. Um, but again, I'm a little bit different, as you know. I do shockwave therapy. That's something I delved into about eight and a half years ago. Uh, and that's a long story, but uh, it's quite different. Um, the shockwave therapy was used originally in the 80s in Europe, developed in Switzerland, to break up kidney stones. And of course, after years of breaking up kidney stones, they start discovering that a lot of these people with their chronic pain, it was starting to go away. And of course, they wanted to discover why. So a lot of research was put into that. And they discovered uh, the mechanisms um, through shockwave, what was actually going on in the muscle. Um, and so now, after 20, 25 years of that therapy changing, not only is it used at Kelowna General for kidney stones, but we're using it to, to treat chronic muscular injuries. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been fascinating. So you know I've been working on you. Yeah. And yep. Uh, it's a little uncomfortable at times, but completely tolerable. What's interesting for me, and I hope for you too, is that after the treatment the other day, I haven't felt the thing in my shoulder, a negative thing in my shoulder since. So bravo to that. It's the t I wish it was me, but it's the technology. Yeah. I wish I could say yeah. it was all me, but... No, I mean, it's uh, essentially what it does. The reason why it's so different than a lot of other therapies out there, most therapy is designed to bring in blood into the area. It's designed to stimulate healing. Um, you know, things like massage therapy might break up some adhesions in the tissue, which are great. But what's so different about shockwave therapy is it's really more uh, separate from other therapies and its ability to break up chronic conditions, to, to heal chronic conditions. And it does that by breaking up the scar tissue. Talk to us and my viewers about your clinic. Well, we've been around for about 10 years now. Um, I, have, I have another, I don't know if you met Bobby Davis, he's another shockwave therapist yes, that did. we have. Yeah, he's a kinesiologist. I've got two massage therapists working for me and they've been working for me for quite a while. I've had massage therapy for 10 years. Uh, again, I'm a, a big believer in soft tissue treatments. Um, and I have two front desk staff, Carly and Liz, they're wonderful. Um, we like to keep our, our energy pretty, pretty mellow, pretty relaxed for the patients. I never wanted to have the typical medical office that was kind of a little bit more intimidating for a lot of people to come into. My background yep. is more yep. medical, so uh, I kind of went the other way. And uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty relaxing environment. How do you market your clinic to the world? Ah, uh, well, I mean, you know, the funny thing about chiropractic is they teach you, you know, you spend four years, post-grad four years, uh, learning all about how to treat people and how to diagnose, but they teach you nothing about business. So most guys get out of school and they say, you know what, I'm going to work for a guy. I'll try to learn what I can. And that's a bit of a struggle and then eventually someone goes on their own. But I decided to open up on my own. 
Uh, and it was, it was tough. It was tough for a few years. And a lot of guys go through it. A lot of guys struggle. And it's about getting, it's about getting our name out there. You know, only 15% of the population actually sees a chiropractor as opposed to 80% seeing a dentist. Okay. So we have to get out there. We have to market. And most guys will go out there. You'll see a chiropractor at a fair or at the mall doing what's called a spinal screening and trying to get attention and, and get people in. And uh, I was never really a, a big fan of that. I like people, but it's a tough part of the profession to have to go out and, and market yourself kind of like a salesman. That's tough for me. So long story short, i um, been doing Shockwave for a few years. Uh, talked to a massage therapist in Trail who'd been referring a lot of patients to me. Her and a few surgeons out there. I went out there to treat some patients for them and we sat down and had dinner and she says, man, you must be just so busy with this thing. I've never seen a technology like this. It's incredible. And I said, no, I'm really not that busy. There aren't that many people that have heard of it. Even though it's not new, people just haven't heard of it. And so when I came back, I started to send out information to all the doctors brochures, education, Good. research. Good, now, now you're talking my language. Yeah, sent, sent that stuff out to the doctors, the physios, the massage therapists, no response, nothing, oh, nothing. Sakes. So I started to think about some guys that I'd known, uh, Dr. Marcus Thiel, a chiropractor in town. He, yeah. he has marketed through the Capital News with, and not really necessarily marketing, but doing articles, getting information out there yep. to people. And yep. I thought, yep. you know, yep. maybe that's something I'll do. Maybe I'll start doing an article. Um, and informational to, to patients to let them know what column. it is that I do. A bit of a column, right? So we did that. That s seemed to drum up some attention. And the more people rolled in, the better they got. Their doctors started to hear about it. And once the doctors heard from the patients that they were getting better, now lots refer. So it kind of went full circle the other way. So I've done that, um, you know, and that's been good for me. I got into some radio. Uh, global TV, I'm doing some marketing there with some TV commercials more recently, trying some different things there. You know what's funny that when we have this conversation is that it seems since I've met you and since you first treated me, it seems that every time I turn around I see or hear of Ryan Harris. Really. No joke. And I think that's really interesting. I said to myself, you're doing something right because you're out there. Now, that being said, I think you can do more. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, it, well, let me say it a different way. I don't think it's too much for you to get out there because I have discovered in my life in other areas of endeavor that you just can't do enough. It's true. And people are, people are ignorant and they're always hungry for more. Give them, give them, give them, because they'll always take. And now that I've experienced your treatment, uh, I, your treatment protocol, I think, I think it's, it'd be well worth your time spent, money and time spent, to market the heck out of your clinic and your service. In other words, It'd be nice to, I know it sounds melodramatic that every time people turn around, they see or hear Ryan Harris, Ryan Harris, Ryan Harris. I think that would be well worthwhile. Well, I think you're right. It's funny that you mentioned that because I went to a marketing meeting several years back and uh, one of the things that they talked about was the fact that in order for a person to choose a service, they have to see that name or that person um, several times, usually an average of about seven. And, you know, so with the paper advertising, that's why I started to market it several times a month and continue and then add another paper and then add radio and then, because the idea was to see me everywhere, as you said, yeah. so that you can, I'm always top of mind. And that's the point of marketing in any profession is you have to be top of mind. You, know? you, just, you just nailed it. Top of mind, I think, is, is, the, is the, answer to the answer to the maiden's prayer. Mm -hmm. Top of mind. I think it's time, let's take a, let's take a short break, Ryan and then we'll pick up the story of Ryan when we come back. Sure. Well, we're back here with Ryan Harris, a doctor of chiropractic medicine with the Glenmore Clinic. And I want to go into the story of Ryan now, if we might. Talk about uh, 
from whence you've come and talk about what's got you, what got you into chiropractic medicine and, uh, and, and talk a little bit about the journey you've taken to uh, establish your credential and why did you choose why chiro chiropractic medicine as opposed to being a, a stamp collector or... I got gotcha. you. Your show isn't long enough to explain all this, but I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm originally from Edmonton, uh, born there, moved to Florida when I was six. Oh, okay. uh, my dad at the time owned a framing company, um, moved down to Florida, uh, which was a great place to grow up as a young guy. Um, he started a construction company there as well, got into commercial construction, and I lived there for six years. And when at some point my parents decided, yeah, maybe the Florida and, and this, the U.S. isn't the best place to raise our kid, let's move back up north. And we had family here, so it made sense to come here. He had a construction company, and it was a, a budding uh, retirement community in the 90s, so we came here to build houses. And uh, when I was in about grade 11 is kind of when I got the bug for, for health care. Uh, biology. That was mm -hmm. that kind of changed mm -hmm. my life. Biology. I wanted. I wanted to be a surgeon at the time. Okay. I loved to dissect. I wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted to open people up, uh, for whatever reasons unknown. But um, it just seemed like the right fit for me. So I did the whole pre med thing and did the volunteering at KGH and worked at UBC Hospital and BGH and with a, a wonderful uh, GP out in Vancouver. And you know, all through that process, as far as anyone knew, as far as I knew, I was going to be be a medical doctor and uh, pretty early on I figured out I really don't like hospitals too much. I didn't enjoy being there as much as I thought I would um, but the GP that I worked with was passionate and he loved what he did and so I kept spurring on and, and did the MCATs and kept going and and uh, you know when it came down to it I ended up having at the time in my first couple of years of university a pretty severe uh, injury or pain from a previous injury when I was 16 and it was quite debilitating and at the time I went from doctor to doctor to doctor nobody knew what was wrong with me uh, <laughs> they wanted to do uh, exploratory surgery on my chest and I really wasn't excited about doing that and my girlfriend at the time said you know what you, you went to a chiropractor when you were quite young it helped you out why don't you try one I thought oh, I got nothing to lose why not and so I did and sure enough completely fix what I had very quickly too, uh. my dad. I mean, it was a very easy, quick process and that just changed my paradigm. Yeah. Um, you know, I started to look at the two professions and, and what they were all about and eventually what I decided to do was to shadow a chiropractor and see, well, what's the profession like? What's it all about? What are, what are the patients saying? How do they feel? And it was just a different energy in the office. You know, the patients were happy, they were excited, they were having fun, they were communicating with each other. You know, when I would go to my GP's office, it wasn't quite the same. I mean, everyone's <laughs> obviously sick and, yeah. and, you know, in pain. And, um, but it's just a different, it's a different feeling. And so very quickly, I decided to, to shift careers and, and go more towards the path of trying to stop the cause of problems rather than trying to create, um, you know, uh, healing for the symptoms, you know, really. Uh, and so at the time, the chiropractor that, that helped me he said, you know what, you got to go down to California, you got to go to Life West. It's the most technologically advanced school in the world for chiropractic. And off I went. So the journey began there. Huh. What year was that? Uh, that was in 2002. Okay, not that long ago. Not that long ago. I graduated in 2006. It's a four year program. I moved directly back up to, to Kelowna. So, um, and yeah, I mean, I, again, I opened up on my own instead of going the associate route. So how, that being said, how do you market the uh, services and capability of your clinic? How do you market it? Well, I mean, marketing for me, you know, a lot of it in the beginning was all about, you know, just getting information out there. Uh, I created some videos. Uh, good, good. Videos good. to explain what it is that I do. I think visuals are really important. And now with the advent of you know, things like Snapchat and Twitter and Facebook and everything else, people want to see things. Now this was kind of pre-Facebook in that era, but um, the videos I think make the biggest difference for me when people go to my website. Um, still? Still. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, usually when people come to my site, they say, hey, great site, but I watched your video. Yeah. Uh, and even the newspaper that I 
that I advertise in or the two newspapers, it's, I think the people's final decision is really after they've come to my website and they've watched the video and they get a sense of who I am and what it is that I'm doing, uh, plus a demonstration of what it is that I do, and I think there's a bit of a connection there and more comfort. You do traditional or conventional chiropractic treatment, but additionally, you emphasize soft tissue. Soft tissue. Yeah. And the technology that you utilize with me. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So Did I, I say that right? That's no, you've got it. I mean, I'm I'm a you know I'm a traditional chiropractor in the sense that I adjust the spine. I'm what would be called a mixer in that I adjust wrists and ribs and ankles and um, jaws, which is a bit different <laughs> than some chiropractors. And then, of course, I get into technology like the shockwave. So yeah, I've always been a big proponent of research um, and that what you do should be research-based. Um, that technology has a good place for us in, you know, now and in the future. And when I opened up practice, I, I, you know, right off the get-go, I. I incorporated digital, uh, digital x-ray because I wanted to have the latest in technology and uh, shockwave therapy just seemed to fit right along with that. Now there's a bit of a story on, on to how I got into shockwave therapy. Please do. It, it wasn't that I necessarily went out looking for this technology. Um, again, another injury. Apparently I injure myself quite often, but I, <laughs> I uh, you know, being a young guy working out at the gym, lifting weights that I probably shouldn't have been lifting, I injured my shoulder. That later turned into an elbow injury as well. Uh, and I did physio and massage and acupuncture and acupressure and pretty much everything you could think of. I did two years of therapy, nothing helped. I took a year off the gym, that didn't help. Uh, and at the time, the same fellow that got me into chiropractic, by coincidence, he was kind of getting ready to retire, sold his practice, uh, wanted to come and rent a room from me. I said, yeah, you're welcome, come on in. And he had this machine, looked kind of like R2-D2, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and I said, hey, you know, what is that? He says, oh, this is what it is. It's shockwave therapy. This is what it does. Uh, and I said, hey, can you help me out? I'm, I'm in agony. It's, it hurts for me to adjust patients now. I'm not sure if my career has much longer, if this continues. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, he treated me within a few treatments, wiped it out completely. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah. And oh. it's been nine years, and I haven't had to come yeah. back yet. Oh, good. So I was pretty impressed at the time, and I said, yeah. hey, listen, you, you've got to train me on this. I need to know how to use this. And so very quickly, he started to train me. I worked with his patients over about six months and then he ended up retiring and I took over from there. The rest is history. The rest is history. So, and I changed up a little bit of what he did and, and the protocols. Um, you know, the therapy itself is incredible. It's an incredible technology. Yeah. However, the protocols are designed in a laboratory, essentially. Yeah, it's with patients, but it's, it's different than real world application. And so what I learned over the years was that uh, What's on paper is different than, than what's out yes. in real life. So I've develop, developed a lot of my I own. I can vouch for that. Yeah. Boy, can I ever vouch for that. Oh, yeah. I keep shaking my head. As I'm getting older, I'm, I'm discovering aches and pains in parts of my body that I didn't realize would ultimately pr produce aches and pains. I mean, and so then it's easy to say, well, yeah, you're getting older. When you're getting older, you're bound to have some aches and pains. And I think it's kind of a cop-out that a lot of um, people are told that, oh, it's, you know, you're getting older. It's a product of age. Yeah. You know, your, your body's breaking down, and it's just the way it is. And yeah. I, I get it. I got it right before I came here. The, my last patient. That's today? what her doctor, that today, my last patient <laughs> said, you know what? My doctor told me nothing I can do. It's a product of getting older. Suck it up. Suck it up. Yeah. Right? And I hear it all the time. Yeah. And... It's really not a product of age. It's a product of maybe we, we didn't know what was out there to prevent and maintain this. Healthcare over the years, I mean, you look at medicine. Medicine is, is emergency care, right? It's emergency and crisis care. And that's what we use it for, for our daily routines, our daily aches and pains and coughs and colds and, and, and muscle pain. And that's not what it's designed for. You know, things like naturopath, acupuncture, massage, chiro, you know, those are the things that are dealing with preventative problems and maintaining our bodies. What sets the spark in your soul, in your heart, about entrepreneurship? All because right. let's dwell for a moment about entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is the, is the science that looks at the world and thinks differently. 
looks at the world around and thinks differently. And it's the two key words for entrepreneurship are innovation and creativity. And I think you probably agree with me wh when we talk about shockwave therapy and some of the other modalities that you undertake that we would be touching on, on innovation and crea creativity. Very much so. And I think, you know, the innovation is definitely the shockwave. The creativity was, was how do you get, how do you grow your business? How do you get your face out there? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you take a technology that someone hasn't heard about and bring it to the forefront? And that's been creativity. And uh, I mean, I got to admit, my wife was a huge part of that. She was a massive part. She's a, a wonderful writer and brilliant and was a big part of, you know, trying to help me figure out how to get it out there. But in terms of, you know, yeah, the fire within, you know, what's, what's really prompted me to want to be an entrepreneur? And it, it really comes back to my parents. You know, my parents were entrepreneurs my whole life. You know, my whole life I watched my dad uh, run construction companies, uh, land development. Um, and I, I love that. I loved it. And yet you didn't go that way. No, I didn't. I mean, he wanted me to. He said, son, I want you to take over the business. Go get a business degree. And uh, I wanted to kind of carve my own path. You know, part of it was seeing that, uh, you know, the construction industry is a really, really volatile industry, as we've seen over the last yeah, eight years right. here in Kelowna. That's right. Right? It's up and down. One day you're, you live in a nice house, you got a pool, you got 50 employees, and the next day you're laying everyone off. So I saw that, and that pushed me away a little bit. I wanted to create something on my own, but I also wanted it to be stable. Um, and, I, and I just loved healthcare. But it's, it's them. It's, it's watching what they went through. Um, they were in charge of their own destiny. Where do they live now? Um, my mom lives here in Kelowna. My dad actually passed away a couple oh, of years ago. Okay. Um, you know, worked up until seven days before he passed, you know, doing <laughs> what, he, what he loved to do and, and trying to create. Um, and for me, I, uh, I mean, that's where I get it from. You know, I wanted to follow that path, just a, a bit of a different path. Well, it's a wrap. Thank you once again for agreeing to come and visit with yep. us and sharing your knowledge and your, the insight into your world. Thanks for having me. Okay, take care. You bet. Well, that's it for the Fire Within for this week. Once again, I'm Joel Young, your host. It's a wrap. Goodbye. <laughs>